Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon and we're gonna talk about the comic book industry. We're gonna talk about DC Comics and a uh, rumor coming from Wes over at Thinking Critical that DC might be getting ready to license out its comic books. It seems like they're getting their house in order or rather getting their uh, character Bibles ready. And that usually is a pretty good indicator that they're gonna job out some of this stuff that they're gonna pass on some characters to some potential licensees. So let's let's talk about this before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Over 275,000 subs. Thank you for the support. Speaking of comics, speaking of support, check out Crimson Wren Volume 1 from Clownfish Studios. That's that's us. We we make comics too. I worked in comics for years. Um, Geeky wrote the story. I helped with the script and Jose Garcia is doing the art and uh, it's some really beautiful stuff. If you like fantasy, if you like uh, manga style books, anime style books, check it out. Uh, it's a great uh, PG, PG-13 adventure that is for everybody, not just kids, not just adults, but everybody who likes a good action adventure story, uh, kind of in the vein of something you would see in the 1980s that is Crimson Wren. Uh, DC Comics is not publishing that. Obviously, DC Comics is in quite a state right now, aren't they? So let's let's talk about this. Uh, Wes from Thinking Critical has gotten a couple of tips from, I believe, uh, DC Comics Insiders, and he dropped one, I want to say, last week that, uh, or the week before, that Warner Brothers Discovery was looking into the books at DC Comics that they were uh, they wanted them to turn over all their data, their sales data, uh, all of that for um, feedback, input, decision making, whatever. We know that David Zaslav, the new CEO of Warner Brothers Discovery, is moving very quickly to cancel projects and reorganize things to be profitable. Like this guy doesn't waste time. Uh, he canceled the Batgirl movie. Um, he's trying to find a new head of uh, DC Entertainment to rival, you know, Kevin Feige, and I. I think he's going to go with that Lego movie guy, if I remember correctly. And, and that guy might oversee the comics, too, because, uh, you know, Jim Lee's not doing a very good job. I love Jim Lee as an artist, but uh, he's not a very good publisher or businessman, obviously, based on what's going on at DC Comics right now. A lot of the stupid changes they've been making to characters and their sales decisions and uh, just it's it's a wreck. Um, but there are some things going on that seem to support that. Uh, DC Comics might be looking to outsource their comic books. And this rumor has been going around for a couple of years now. And in fact, uh, Ethan Van Skyver talked about it. He said he'd heard that um, there were some people interested in getting the DC license, that it's not really profitable for DC to publish in-house anymore, at least not for Warner, not for AT&T at the time, now Warner Brothers Discovery. And uh, there were some other rumors that uh, you know Robert Kirkman was actually looking at trying to get the license too. And there is some supporting evidence that uh, DC Comics is not very important at all to Warner Brothers Discovery. The characters are, Batman is, Superman is, Wonder Woman, but not the comic books themselves. In fact, uh, it's really hard to gauge just how much money they're making on comics because you know they're using uh, lunar distribution now. Comicron used to be a fairly good indicator of comic book sales, at least to shops, but uh, I can't keep track of what's going on with uh, with DC right now. Um, their diamond numbers show that the highest selling Marvel book is Amazing Spider-Man number one at 92,000 copies, which is pretty pretty abysmal, but Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from IDW sells over 100,000. Like, what the hell is up with that? But you look at the sales numbers, they're not good. I don't think DCs are that good either. Uh, a lot of DC fans not happy with the direction of DC Comics and some of the changes made to the characters. Uh, apparently, they're getting ready to reset DC again, again with Flashpoint Beyond, and they just reveal the Joker's uh, real name. You can go out and look that up. Well, I guess it's on screen right now. This is supposed to be the Joker's real name. I don't know. I don't care. It's all fan fiction at this point. Who gives a shit, right? <laughs> so let's talk about this rumor. Uh, Wes said that uh, they're looking to get together character Bibles. Now, I worked on licensed Disney comics for a good number of years. I'm very familiar with character Bibles. And they usually give character Bibles out to companies that license out IP, whether it's for video games or movies. And in fact, it's character Bibles, uh, or it is a, a character Bible 
that is responsible for keeping Peter Parker a straight white male. As I understand, it was actually mandated by Marvel, by Disney, that this is what Peter Parker is, according to the character Bible. So he always will be, in the movies anyway, as I understand it, until somebody decides to change it, a straight white dude. And that is uh, the mandate. Now, uh, Tim Drake did not have a character Bible created for him, so they made him bisexual for reasons like I haven't seen any indication in any any of the comics I read. Now, it's been, you know, two plus decades since I've really read any Tim Drake Robin comics, but uh, I have never seen any indication that Tim Drake was uh, attracted to boys. But there it is, guys. There it is. But uh, yeah, the fact that they're getting character Bibles together tells me they're at least entertaining the thought of outsourcing these characters because they're going to hand them over to a licensee and say, look, this is the definitive version of Batman. This is the definitive version of the Flash. Uh, if you guys are going to make Batman or Flash comics or, you know, Superman comics, Wonder Woman comics, this is these are the guidelines uh, per DC Comics. This is what you have to adhere to. And uh, again, I'm very familiar with those as somebody who worked on Disney comics. They're right down, you know, right down to the damn colors of the costumes, of the characters. Um, I had one character Bible that literally had the color of Donald Duck's tongue, uh, CMYK, broken down in the character Bible in the style guide. So they're pretty meticulous, right? Um, so the latest rumor comes from comic book YouTuber Wes at Thinking Critical. He claims that DC Comics has been told to get character Bibles together. Character Bible is a document that outlines the do's and don'ts of a company-owned character IP and is often used as a guideline for licensees. Uh, this is what he says. He said, Warner Brothers Discovery have directed the personnel at DC to start creating character Bibles for all the characters. Now, this is like right after they were told to fork over, uh, fork over the financials, you know. I mean, this, this, you know that feeling you get when your job is on the line, when you, you feel like you're training your replacement? Yeah, that's kind of kind of what it feels like is going on here. Why would you need character Bibles now? Is it because David Zaslav wants more continuity among the characters, like a more baseline version of the characters? Or is it something else? I think it's something else. I think it's something else. Um, you know, this wouldn't be concerning on its own. They're supporting evidence that DC might be thinking about outsourcing them. Uh, yeah, and again, you know, it was Wes who said that they were taking a good hard look at DC Comics' bottom line. And... Before you, you know, start saying, hey, this is just a bunch of, you know, alt-right YouTubers, and, you know, just doom and gloom. Look at the supporting evidence here. DC Comics offices are moving to a hot desk model. That's not an upgrade. A lot of people tried to argue that this is an upgrade. No, they got kicked out of their Burbank offices and moved into what is essentially a WeWork, like a college startup. That screams temporary solution. Temporary is a temporary situation. Uh, before Warner Brothers Discovery bought DC Comics, there were several rounds of layoffs, high-profile layoffs. Um, DC just signed a new distribution deal with Universal. Now, this one's interesting. They're already working with Lunar. Again, I don't know what the sales numbers are like or if some comic shops have just dropped DC altogether because they don't want to deal with Lunar. They just want to deal with Diamond. But it sounds to me like they're being told that they need to increase their sales. Just somehow, they have to increase their sales. And they're all of a sudden, after they're being asked for their numbers, reportedly, they're signing this, uh, they're signing this distribution deal. You know, so that's pretty interesting too. So this is, again, more supporting evidence. You know, corporations put money, this is me, this is me saying this as a corporate guy. Corporations put money into divisions they believe will pay out dividends and it appears that the comic book publishing arm of DC has been getting downgraded again and again, like Milton from Office Space. It feels like they're about to move DC Comics into the basement at Warner Brothers Discovery. That's what it feels like. It feels like they're moving their stapler. Like, hey, you guys, yeah, you're going to have to move your office. Yeah, we're going to lay people off. Yeah, could you could you tell me what you do here, Milton? Could you tell me what you do here, Jim Lee? Could you give me some, could you give me the numbers? Could you just, you know, hand over the numbers for DC Comics for the last you know, 10, 20 years. Mm, thanks. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah. Hey, hey, Jim, Um, your job is safe, but could you maybe spend the next you know month or so typing up some guidelines? If somebody else, just hypothetically speaking, if you get hit by a bus or something, Jim, 
If somebody else were to take over your job publishing DC Comics characters, what would you say is the definitive qualities of Superman, of Batman, of Wonder Woman? Could you put that into a document? And could you send that over to us? Mm, thanks. Everything's okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. Everything's fine, Jim. It's all fine here. Uh, so now here's where it gets really interesting. Todd McFarlane, and we talked about this before, Todd McFarlane is doing a Batman Spawn crossover comic, which he's hoping will be the comic book event of the century. That's that's what the outlets are running with. It's going to be the comic book event of the century, and he's been selling a shit ton of Spawn comic books. Well, he's got the DC Comics license for action figures, the DC Direct. He's been doing a really good job, I think, with the Superpowers collection. Um, I've been seeing them on clearance lately, though, which has me a little concerned, but they're really nice looking toys. He's also doing these page punchers figures, which I, we've talked about this before, uh, that they are figures that come packed with a comic book like they used to do back in the day with He-Man and Mask and pretty much like every other toy line had a comic book packed in, right? The difference is that McFarlane Productions, Todd McFarlane Productions is producing the comic book. They're producing the comic book for DC. So it is very possible, in fact, I'd say it's very plausible that this is a uh, trial run, kind of like DC Comics produced the pack-in Masters of the Universe comics and eventually got the license to do the DC Comics. This could be a trial run to see how a third party handles the DC characters. And if he does well with it, if, if they're happy, it might be that they're like, yeah, you know, Todd, just you pay us every year and you produce the comics. Now, this apparently has happened before. Robert Kirkman was supposed to be in talks with him, you know, uh, to possibly do the DC characters. Robert Kirkman and a few other like rich, you know, um, rich Hollywood comic book fans, you know, probably Kevin Smith, who the hell knows. But I guess the price under AT&T was so astronomical, according to Wes, according to, I think it was Perch too. Uh, it might have been Perch that actually told Wes. But uh, the price was so astronomical that they passed on it. But now David Zaslav is very keen to uh, offload different uh, cartoon shows and different uh, productions to other platforms, to even to their direct competitors. So he probably is willing to cut a deal. Like, hey, how much money would we save if somebody else just produced, published the DC Comics and we just keep maybe four or five people as brand managers, uh, you know, whatever to oversee, um, you know, the brand to make sure that everything's going well, they would save a, a, a ton of money. You know, basically Todd McFarlane or somebody else would pay DC Comics to produce the comic books. They would still get pure revenue, basically, just in royalties. And um, it's a win-win. You know, the comics still get distributed. McFarlane already has distribution set up with Image Comics and all of that. I mean, it totally could happen. And at that point, basically, the DC characters become, um, you know, movie IP like, you know, Aliens or Transformers and G.I. Joe and all these other companies are outsourcing their characters. And I could totally see somebody like David Zaslav who does not give a shit. He doesn't have any emotional attachment to these characters. I could totally see him being like, yeah, OK, so a guy who's worked on uh, DC Comics before, who's got a pretty good track record, wants to give us money to make the comics based on these characters. And we're not basing any of the movies on the comic book versions now anyway. So who gives a shit? Yeah, we'll take his money. We'll take his money and then we can fire how many dozens of people, how many hundreds of people in uh, the offices at DC and save all that money. I mean, they've already got one foot out the door. They're in a temporary office situation right now as it is. I mean, that definitely is one foot out the door, one foot in the basement as it were. So it's gonna be really interesting to see how this plays out. Uh, I think you know whether it happens this year, next year, a couple years from now, it makes sense both for DC and for Marvel to just outsource their comic books. There's not enough money in, in it, honestly, for either one of these companies to keep doing it themselves. And um, there are people out there that their sole business model is making comic books. And to them, making a profit it means more off of these comics than it does to a, a, a DC or a Disney. I mean, Disney, you can be profitable and not be profitable enough. Todd McFarlane um, or Robert Kirkman or whoever could actually maybe possibly salvage these characters and sell more comics and they would be completely happy with the profit margins uh, being much smaller operations. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this one up. 
Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later.